Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. We start off with peace, and this is our sincere intention for everybody to establish peace in their life. But how can you have peace if you don't know the purpose of life, if you don't know why you've been created? My next guest has been touring the whole world, sharing the purpose of life, the purpose of life with the people. But how do you share this purpose of life if you're not giving what we feel is that invitation? We're going to be talking about the importance of this invitation. The invitation that will give you peace, prosperity, success in this life, and success in the next life. My guest, when we come back here on The Dean Show, is going to share to us the importance of giving this invitation, the legacy of this invitation. My next guest here on The Dean Show, I'm excited, and I'm sure you are also. You've been waiting for this moment. Sheikh Khalid Yassin, when we come back here on The Dean Show, sit tight. This is The Dean. The Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean. This is the Dean. Peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah. Very well, brother. Now, time is limited. Thank you very much for finding the time. I know you're a very busy individual. You're touring the, touring the world, as I mentioned, sharing the purpose of life with the people. Myself. You used to be a former Christian. Not to go too deeply into your past, but uh, this is true. You used to be a, a Christian, then you accepted this beautiful way of life. Yeah, that is true. As a matter of fact, um, I don't say to people I used to be a Christian. Uh, the values of loving Jesus Christ and relating to the mission of Jesus Christ and the principles of the life of Jesus Christ, I've maintained that uh, to, as far as I'm concerned. So I think I got the best uh, out of Christianity, if we want to call it that. Uh, I got the best out of that by becoming Muslim. So when I meet Christians, I say to them that I still carry the values and the principles of loving Jesus Christ and perhaps maybe more than people who call themselves Christians. Now you said an Arabic word, you said Muslim. was. We, we probably say, I mean, is it true that Jesus was a Muslim? Absolutely. The word Muslim means the one who submits to Almighty God and the mandate or the scripture or the revelation that God sent. So all the prophets, Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, Isaac, Ismail, Jesus Christ, and of course the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing upon him, they were the best of those that submitted. So to submit means Muslim and uh, Islam means submission. So based upon that uh, a basic uh, principle and definition, of course, the prophets were all Muslims, and we following them, so we're Muslims. So are you safe to say also that you're worshiping the God that Jesus worshiped, the God that Jesus prostrated to, the God that Jesus, peace be upon him, called upon? Of course. I mean, this is the God of the creator, uh, the, the God who is the creator of the heavens and earth, and the only one who has the capacity to create, uh, who creates uh, the creation. And, you know, the creation is not the creator, and the creator is not the creation. So. Jesus Christ certainly was the son of Mary. Nobody can doubt that, so he was part of the creation. Now, those that want to deify and make God a man, a man a God, that's a different historical phenomena. Uh, but certainly, it's the same God that we're worshiping. Now, the purpose of life, that's the crucial question. Let me tell you a, a, a true story, okay? Myself, I'm also trying to break the ice with people, get to know them, and share the purpose of life. Try to have them think. Now. I was at the Home Depot the other day. You know the Home Depot? Do you yes. have it in your parts? Sure, all <laughs> sure. So I, I, I kind of established a rapport with one of the people working there. And after seeing him several times, you know, I just come see him the first time, say, hey, have you considered the purpose of life? No, you think I'm crazy or something. But after he saw, you know, that, you know, I, I, I'm just an average person coming here asking, talk, making, you know, small talk, after maybe after half a dozen times of, of seeing me and having small talk conversations, I dropped in his ear. We somehow led in that direction and I thought you know what I'll bring it up you do this all the time you, you you actually have thousands that come to listen to you but it seemed like I was trying to give this invitation just for him to consider it mm. I wasn't trying to proselytize and try to push my beliefs on him but just to have him consider think about it and it seemed like the next time I showed up at that Home Depot I mean he, he, it seemed like I, I had I had brought up a question 
that was just something, it, it was real heavy. Talk to me. Did, we want to learn from, from your experiences and you know, the importance of giving this message, this invitation, and how we can be more sensitive to the people around us, the culture, and the best way to approach this issue of having people consider the purpose of life. Please talk to us, Shea. Uh, well, Eddie, you know, I'd like to just uh, say to yourself and say to your uh, television audience that um, the question, the great question, the central question um, about life is its objective. Not just its end or its beginning, but its objective. Um, and the objective of life uh, is spelled out by understanding its purpose. Uh, and if you don't understand the purpose of life, it doesn't matter what you acquired in life. It doesn't matter what people say about you in life. But if you don't know the purpose, it means that you didn't consider the end. You didn't consider the final value. And so uh, what I've uh, learned to do uh, by appreciating myself is that when I meet people, not to talk about religion, you know, not to talk about politics, uh, not to talk about things that divide us and put, put us on different sides of the aisle, but talk about a theme that everyone can relate to, whether it's time, whether it's weather, whether it's values, principles, or the economy, and then relate that to purpose. Because then people can understand that you're able to make relevant almost any subject. And in the course of doing that, I ask people, have you ever considered uh, your purpose in life? And you'll be surprised. People are, they're stunted. They're startled. D they get confused. Uh, if they're intellectual, all of a sudden they become cloudy. And they ask, uh, what do you mean by that? Well, it's a simple question. Do, uh, have you considered your purpose in life? Why are you here? You know, uh, is there a mandate uh, that you carry? Uh, uh, your beliefs and your values, how do they fit into that purpose? And all of a sudden, you find that most people never really gave it consideration because it's not a subject in school. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't relate directly towards uh, religion or, or, or faith or philosophy or academics. It's an inner question. Uh, it's a question of the heart, a question of the mind. Uh, it speaks to the kind of person that you are. It's sort, it's sort of uh, uh, begins to dictate even uh, how you act, how you behave, how you think, how you interact with other people. So uh, I say to the audience, uh, the world audience, your, your studio audience, uh, I say to people that we need to take the time to consider our purpose in life. And when we consider our purpose in life, then you'll find out it's an even plane. You can even start all over again. You don't have to be born again. Uh, you just reassess yourself. And then when you reassess yourself, you may find that you need to make some adjustments to change where you're heading because you're going to wind up uh, you're going to wind up in a place based upon what you're doing if you're riding a bicycle you're not going to wind up in a place where plane lands you know where planes land um, uh, it, you know if you um, if you're doing bling bling if that's your branding if your branding is bling bling you're not going to wind up on the top of society so purpose almost dictates where you're going to wind up at literally even after this life you know like after life or life hereafter or hereafter or after here uh, the way you interpret purpose so, sort of dictates where you're going to be head I mean in your interpersonal relationships whether with wife or children and other people the values that um, that you personify has something to do with purpose so I think that this theme purpose is so profound uh, it's like our nose on our face uh, uh, we look at it every day, uh, but we don't even, sometimes we miss it. So if we reconsider purpose, each one of us, whether we are Hindu or Buddhist or Christian or Muslim or Mias or Deus or whatever we are, put purpose in there and begin that purpose. It may reorientate your life even a small amount. Sheikh, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Sit tight. Sheikh Khaled Yassin on the Dean Show. I'm going nowhere. On the outside, everything looks good. You see the $100,000 cars, you see a lot of diamonds, you see a lot of females, and they think that this is, you know, this is a life. This is, this is like, you know, paradise right here on Earth. It's not anyone's job to go into someone's heart and change their heart. Your job is to tell people what the truth is. And the reality of it is, while we're sitting here, while I'm sitting here constantly paying for the disease, the cure was free. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid.
afraid to stand alone If a lion's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lion's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lion's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Khalid Yassin. Now, we're talking about purpose, crucial question. And you have toured the world. You've given hundreds of lectures on this very topic. Is this correct? You are going to say thousands of lectures. Thousands of lectures. Yes. And a lot of non-Muslims, potential Muslims, have accepted this way of life, the way of life of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, all the messengers of God, that complete and total submission to the one God, not to his creation, but to the creator. Is this true that so many, we, we've seen, you know, d dozens of people lined up after they've listened to your presentation by the grace of uh, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and they've accepted this beautiful way of life. Can you talk about this? Well, you know, uh, Eddie, to be honest with you, um, I'd like to sort of depersonify, um, uh, depersonalize uh, the issue uh, by saying that we see people every morning lined up uh, in McDonald's. Uh, why? Because it's a brand. It's not that the food is good, mm -hmm. it's just that the branding is in their minds and they line up for it every day. Starbucks, um, uh, McDonald's, Burger King, Pizza Hut. Uh, it's not something phenomenal. Uh, it's something that people need, they identify with, and they fit into that pattern of their lives. And what I have found uh, is that when you speak to people's hearts and minds, uh, not with the objective of their being become Muslim, but maybe adding value to their life. They appreciate it. And not only do they appreciate it later on, but some of them appreciate it right away. And you get reactions from people almost immediately. And so uh, when you see people accepting Islam uh, at the end of a, a lecture or presentation that I do, it's not Sheikh Khalid Yassin. Uh, it's that I've switched on something inside of them that they didn't identify before. And when it's switched on, uh, they feel good. Uh, uh, a, a glow comes you know, um, uh, they become a bit uh, naturally inebriated. Uh, they become motivated. Uh, they do some soul searching right on the spot. And I take advantage of that by saying to them that, well, uh, we don't know where life ends. We don't know where the interruption comes. And whatever you're going to bear witness to, whatever you're going to testify to, uh, it's going to be um, uh, written on a tablet uh, that's going to set your values and your balance. It's going to dictate where you're going to arrive at. And so uh, you should testify now because you don't know if you're going to speak, if you're going to wake up tomorrow. And people do. Uh, uh, they embrace Islam on the spot. Uh, in the past 15 years, the Purpose of Life Foundation has been instrumental um, in um, facilitating people to enter Islam. And my colleagues tell me that the figure is somewhere around 38,000. That's what I'm told. However, um, that figure is a bit deceptive or misleading. Uh, because, in fact, uh, a figure that I'd rather uh, give to the audience um, and say to people is that for every one person that have accepted Islam, uh, there's another 10 they didn't accept Islam, they didn't embrace Islam, but they have accepted the values. And they came from a distant point to a closer point. They came from being perhaps enemies in confrontation or, uh, uh, about Islam to become allies. And so if we look at that figure, the 38,000 and another 10 people who didn't enter Islam, but they might be family, they might be a colleague, co-worker, um, a family member. Uh, they might be a neighbor uh, who is no longer confused about Islam, uh, who is no longer uh, apprehensive about Muslims, uh, who understands the values. So they have embraced the values, but they haven't embraced Islam. That's an ally. So that's like 38, that's like 380,000. So that's the figure we like to deal with, to give Muslims the understanding that we have a chance to touch the lives of the American people and people around the world positively. Mm -hmm. Uh, secondly, when you touch their lives in that way, uh, their lives no longer, it, it, they cannot be the same again. And so we are about touching lives, touching hearts. And if some people's minds and hearts and lives are touched and they become Muslims, the benefit is theirs uh, and, and also ours. Uh, we see the residual, residual from God. You know, when somebody enters Islam, it's like a salesman, we get our percentage. Yes. It's a residual that will be on our scales on a day of judgment. Uh, for them, they are the greatest winners because they've been relieved of their sins, and now they have become Muslims, 
and now they can make something better of their, uh, they can see their purpose in life and they can do something better with their lives. We talked about now the purpose of life and the importance of bringing people to, to, to consider this. And so many people that when, when they listen to your lectures and they consider this, they accept this wonderful way of life. But now let's talk about the invitation. The invitation is crucial and many Muslims who are living Islam, they're, they're not sharing this invitation. Can you talk about, in Arabic it's called Dawah, mm. the importance of sharing this message, this message that brings peace to a person's life, that brings happiness and success, the importance of sharing the purpose of life with humanity. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very natural uh, uh, when you think about it. And I like to use the analogy uh, because analogies sometimes get points across quicker than doctrine. Um, you know, out of uh, some 180 transnational companies in the world today, about 120 are American companies. Now, that needs to be explained, put into context. Uh, this is because Americans uh, have no problem in promoting their goods and services. Uh, they believe that their goods and services are the best. And they go everywhere in the world and say, I'm an American. And their goods and services are embraced by people all over the world. If a Muslim believes that their faith system and their values is the best that the world has to offer, why wouldn't they share that with another human being? And if they're not doing that, then there's probably some psychological or personal um, um, deficits that they have. Uh, maybe they have a, a, a conflict in their uh, uh, self-esteem. Maybe they're socially dysfunctional. Maybe they're afraid. And all of those uh, uh, psychological, uh, um, um, we can call it um, uh, psychological barriers, uh, prevent us from delivering this message. And our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, his main mandate from God was to deliver the message. He was the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if Muslims are Muslims by culture, or they're Muslims uh, by just um, uh, by birth, if they're Muslims just uh, by virtue of uh, saying the words and being Muslim and by performing the prayers and so forth, who cares about that? Nobody knows what we do inside the masjid. Nobody knows what we do inside our homes. What people understand is the behavior. What people understand is the character. What people understand is the residual, the final product. And if people are proud about the products and services that they represent, they speak to the world about it. And so when we give dawah, the invitation to Islam, we're not inviting people to ourselves. We're not inviting people to Muslims. We're inviting people to Islam, submission to the one God. We're inviting people to a premise of life that will give them benefit in this life and also in the hereafter. So why wouldn't people do that? And if they don't do that, well, they are the losers. Uh, and then uh, those of us who have adopted that mode uh, uh, of responsibility, and that's what it is. It's a social responsibility that we have to what deliver the message. Because if we don't deliver the message, then we're like an ambassador that was sent out from the king. And we arrived in a place to deliver a message on behalf of the king. And we got so engrossed with the society uh, that we were sent to, we forgot to deliver the message. So we Muslims have been sent by the king of the heavens and the earth and we are ambassadors to deliver this message, and we cannot forget uh, our mission statement. Before we go to break, just if you can help clarify, you, you mentioned something about the, the, the person's mind becomes a little clouded, but why is it when we talk about sports, when we talk about football, baseball, when we talk about the opposite gender and dating and you know, Facebook and all these other things that are out there, pe people, you know, you can carry on a conversation, but sometimes, usually, like this ind individual at Home Depot, real life example, you bring up this crucial question and the person's mind becomes clouded. Why do you think this is? Uh, well, it's, an, it's a natural, natural um, psychological knee-jerk, we call it. Knee-jerk? Yes, yeah, knee-jerk. It's like, um, I don't know if you took psycholo psychology 101 and the whole um, an analogy of Pavlov's, Pavlov's uh, salivating dog, um, that when you think about food, you start salivating. When you look at the golden arches of, uh, of McDonald's, you start to salivate. So this is something natural, inherent in the human being. And so people, uh, when they talk about sports or girls talking about boys and boys about girls and uh, whatever it is that people feel motivated about and whatever, they have a natural uh, ability to communicate uh, and, and talk about my team, okay, and to talk about it real enthusiastically. But when it comes to the issue of their faith-based principles, if they're not clear about that, they don't salivate, they're not motivated. And therefore, they start talking about it in a very clinical way. They become reactionary. So, you know, we need to do this in a very natural way, just like fish swim and birds fly. 
And, uh, uh, and if we do that, people will receive it in the same way, and Allah knows best. We're going to take another break. Sure. We'll be right back with more. We're here with Sheikh Khaled Yassin on the Dean Show. Sit tight. We'll be right back. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If Allah is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If Allah is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If Allah is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. What everyone's talking about. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. But the argument here is that God, out of His love. Because, in all honesty, if you really wanted to do something, you're going to find a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. There are a few problems here. Why were people of generations and generations and generations being told to worship one God? Ask that God for forgiveness, ask Him for, for salvation, seek His mercy, no one else's. So he picked up the Quran, which is the last and final testament, the last and final revelation. Yeah, I was 16 years, 8 years inactive reserves and 8 years active duty. But uh, the bottom line is that I'm an ophthalmologist, I'm a, a specialist in cataract and refractive surgery, I'm the medical director of a major eye center. These are not God. God is the one who created everything in this universe. That's the one I'm going to worship and prostrate to. How can you go wrong doing that? If you don't believe in Him, you're out of Islam. Top 10 reasons why Jesus cannot be God. Let's get right to it. Cannot be God. Number 10. Number 10. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Khalid Yassin. Purpose of life. Crucial question. You got to get motivated to give the invitation to have people reflect and consider the purpose of life before death. It's a reality. It's coming, isn't it? Yes. So wh what would you feel is a positive way, a natural way, a way that we can get more people to consider this? We can get more people to consider the purpose of life before that ultimate reality hits death and the grave. And then bye-bye to all the baseball, football, and all these other things that people were consumed with. Give us some advice, Shay, please. Well, um, Eddie, I think that um, talking to human beings about the purpose of life or uh, trying to get people to consider or to share that value, uh, it should come naturally. Um, I think that uh, if I'm on a train or a bus or uh, in a cafe or in a school or, and I'm talking to a person, uh, we talk about the weather, uh, we talk about the economy, and we have to make relevant uh, the value systems, regardless of who we're talking to and what we're talking about. The other thing is that uh, we need to basically um, put into that, when people see a value in something, they want what is valuable. Nobody wants what is invaluable. Secondly, people want what is contemporary. They don't want what is old. They, they can appreciate nostalgia, uh, but they want what is modern, what is contemporary, what is relevant today. And so in the course of my interaction with people, generally, I try to make relevant to them the value of life, the principles of life. Uh, and I get them to agree, to, to have consensus about those values uh, and to want those values and that we want the same values. When I get them to agree to that, then I ask them, so how can you sort of ensure uh, that you're going to become a beneficiary of those values? When they're not clear about it, I say, well, let me make a proposition to you. And uh, people like propositions uh, and not um, uh, things that um, we order them to do. You know, we try to give them close-in propositions. No, we give them open propositions. And we say, consider this here. We say, think about this here. And uh, the value that God says, uh, in one place in the Quran, it says, God says, and I'll just uh, translate it quickly. He says, uh, can I invite you to a business or a proposal that will save you from a grievous chastisement? And so I think that uh, since life ends uh, in such an abrupt way, uh, we need to say to people that suppose I, suppose I give you a value or a suggestion 
that may help you to understand the other side of life, the continuation of life, and also add value to the life that you have, do you think they would be motivated to listen? Of course they would. Uh, and we haven't said a word about Islam or the Quran or the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or no Arabic terminologies or no religious terminologies. We've just given them a straightforward proposal that all human beings psychologically are receptive to, and God knows best. We're out of time, but just for the millions of viewers that are out there, there are many who are reflecting about this. And you know what? They just turn the channel, and they're catching us here. They might have gotten away from all the different other distractions, and now you have their attention. What would you have this person consider now? We just have a few few seconds yeah. left. Is a heart to heart with that sincere yes. soul searcher out there who really wants to know what the purpose of life is, why he's been created, where is he going when he dies? Yes. Talk to him, please, Shay. Yes, uh, I'd like to just say to the studio audience, wherever you are in the world or this uh, great country of America, that each one of us need to think about the shortness of life. At the end of the day, um, life is a capsule of time, uh, and you don't control time. Uh, if God had any power over his creatures at all, it would be time. And so we don't know when time is up, therefore we have to use our time properly. We have to consider the power and the benefit of time. And uh, when life is over, it's over. It's wrapped up. It's packaged. And you only have your deeds. It's only your deeds. It's not what you have, it's not what you have wished for or hoped for. It's your deeds. And so on the day of judgment, you'll have your deeds to speak for you. And we ask Almighty God to cause all of us to be cognizant of that and to be the beneficiaries of our time with good deeds. And with good deeds, uh, we'll find that good breeds good. And there's no other reward for good other than good. We want to just thank you so very much for being here at the Dean Show, and we want to be able to come back and forth many different times. Brother. We love to have you. Good breeds good. I That's like right. that, the way good. that we can. We started with peace. We That's end right. with peace. That's correct, brother. Thank you very much. May yes. God Almighty, the Creator, reward yes. you for taking the time to be with us. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show, Purpose of Life. We really want you to consider it for some reason that you have tuned on and you got to just get a little bit of a taste of what we were talking about. If you like what we have to say, continue to tune back here to The Dean Show. Continue to reflect before the end of life approaches. And as the Sheikh was saying, as our guest was saying, time is all we have, so we need to make the best of, out of our time. Doing good breeds good, and we're inviting you to do the ultimate good, and that's to establish a relationship with the one creator who created you. Beseech his help. Call upon him alone, the same God that Jesus called upon, the same God that Abraham, Noah, Moses, all the messengers of God, they sought to know the purpose of life from the creator of life, the one God. Thank you for tuning in to The Dean Show. We hope that you can join us again next time. Until then. Peace be unto you. A lot of you out there are in the exact same position. He said, I would never give up worshiping God as one. I will never give up spreading this message. We hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. <laughs> just clarified everything for me. That's when I became Muslim. The majority of people you talk to, yeah, they know they got to change. They know they got to do good, but they don't do the good. Why is this shit? The ranking of the 100 most influential men in the history of the world. Laziness. The, the reality of life usually doesn't sink in until tragedy comes you know this is when you find people yeah yeah okay tell me about it you yeah, know yeah, yeah. you get a few bad people the media grabs a hold of that and spins it the way they want to and in it he puts muhammad as number one he said no human being had more influence one of the amazing things about islam that everyone should know is that we are the only other religion that is a tenet of faith that you must believe in Jesus Christ and everything that he did or you cannot be a Muslim. If that is missing, if you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is a tenet of our faith to, to believe in and love Jesus Christ. These are not God. God is the one who created everything in this universe. That's the one I'm going to worship and prostrate to. How can you go wrong doing that? 
don't believe in him, you're so out of Islam. You cannot be in Islam. Top 10 reasons why Jesus cannot be God. Let's get right to it. Cannot be God. Number 10. Number 10. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah. You'll be glad you did. Allahu akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah.